Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and if you are new here, hello, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you are back, welcome back. Today, I'm here to join you for a whip and chat. So whip stands for work in progress. Chat stands for chat. So feel free to whip out your whip and work alongside me. I'm just going to chat with you about the week and catch up with you a bit. And uh, hopefully I can keep you company while you're working on a project or uh, running errands, treating this like a podcast, whatever you like. I'm just happy that we get to spend a little time together today. So I'm gonna be working on a diamond painting. Um, this is the kit that I got as a sneak peek last week from Diamond Art Club. It is called Glass Mermaid. Actually, down here at the bottom, you can almost make out there the thumbnail of the original artwork there. It's by Dakota Deitweiler and it's 65 by 65 centimeters. It has square diamonds and is pure confetti. So, uh, but I'm working on this one for a couple of events that I'll talk more about in just a little bit. But um, I'm really looking forward to using a huge variety of new to me accessories today. Um, I unboxed several of these in my most recent small shop haul. And um, I try to do those pretty regularly, but feel free to go back and watch if you wanna see me actually unboxing each of these. But I'm gonna tell you each of the shops that these accessories are from and um, link to them in the description box below in case you're like me and you really love supporting and trying out new small shops, new products from small shops you already know and love, any of those things. So let me give you a really quick rundown of what I have here today. So this is a pen from um, Pen Pal. DP Pen Pal, um, and they had some mermaid themed blanks. And I actually, I cheated a little bit. Um, I opened this one up without um, <laughs> unboxing it into small shop haul first because I just really needed to use it with this kit. So um, I will give you a hint though that I, <laughs> I did order two different kinds of mermaid blanks from them um, in that particular order. So you are seeing this one, but there's one that will still be unboxed in a small shop haul that you'll get to <laughs> stay tuned for. Um, this is my first pen from Shimmering Canvases and it's obviously, it's very rainbowy. And this one just came in. I think this is maybe the one I'll start out with using today because I have never used one of their pens before. I've used Pen Pal before. Um, they, they make pens with roll stops or you can request without. So this one I got without, I think maybe the other one came with a roll stop where it's just flat on one side. That way, if you work on an angled surface, you can like set your pen down and it's not gonna roll off because it's it's flat. Anyway, um, this is Shimmering Canvases. And then this Minder, this is not new necessarily, but it's a perfect excuse to use it. This is from Agnes Little Minders. So darn cute, it's handcrafted polymer clay. And I got this one, I think last year. This is a new to me tray. I'm excited to try this one out. This one's from DP Gal Creations. So I am excited to use this and see, see what we think of that one. Cause I like trying out, like I said, new to me products. I'm so sorry for yawning. I just am having a little bit of trouble getting like good consistent sleep at night. And I'm starting to pay for it a little bit. Uh, now I'm excited to use both of these new to me things and relatively new products to the market as well. So um, Butterfly Effect Wears has started doing some scented putty and I have yet to try it out. So we're gonna use this in my multi-placer today. Mint to be is the, is the scent on this one. And then um, I am gonna try out these uh, Oh Snap Dots, scented uh, glue dots from Oh Snap Crafters Cafe in the scent Unicorn Farts. And I, I have tried playing with these a couple of times a little bit, like that's why there's a couple <laughs> missing, but not like at any length. And I don't really feel like I did a very good job of it. And so I thought, you know what, let me just try testing this out more in a whip and chat, just because I don't know, I thought that that would be more, authentic or something. So um, then what, is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else. Aside from, I am gonna be using um, a thin metal multi-placer. I just got another batch in that I ordered from um, AliExpress uh, is where I get the thin ones. Um, there are, you know, uh, there's the everlasting tips, which are the kind of wider stainless steel ones that they're really, really amazing quality, but they're wider. And so they don't work for me most of the time, especially with multi-placing squares. These, on the other hand, are thinner, more like the thin plastic multi-placers are. Um, and I can get them for really inexpensive from AliExpress. And so I tend to pick them up in bulk and they, they arrive within a couple weeks, actually. Oh, that's snug. I don't even have to use washi tape to help, help that stay in there. Um, 
but I'll link to those below as well. Uh, this came up in someone's live recently. Someone was like, oh, I just get so nervous about ordering from AliExpress. And I was like, no, I've ordered batches of these from AliExpress and they show up every time within two weeks and it's like reliable and stuff. But this is the mint to be putty from Butterfly Effect Wears. Ooh, that's fun. It's all swirly and stuff. It literally, it smells, it's a kind of a strong mint smell. Um, and it looks like, it smells like bubble gum a bit. Uh, so they did include this instructional uh, little pamph like note here. That's not a pamphlet. It's literally a piece of paper. So, okay. It's going to just, I think, I think work the way that any other scented putty does. So let me try, let's get a flat surface here. If I can just pinch some off this way, that's generally a little bit easier. But that's a little thick. I don't know how well that's... Uh, uh, uh. I do these in whip and chats because I feel like sometimes you guys will appreciate seeing me struggle. <clears throat> and I've got nails on today, so it's a little tricky. Let's see. It's not totally... Okay. This is, like, thicker. Definitely a thicker putty. Let's put a little bit in that end there. Because it's looking a little thin over on this end specifically. Sorry, I know the camera doesn't know what to focus on. We'll give that a try. Hopefully that will do the trick. Smooth it out a little bit and even it out. Okay. Cautiously optimistic that that'll work okay. I actually already have a couple other scents from them on the way, in part because they do them as just add-ons for their pens, so it's really easy to just that on um and then they they do sell the putty scents separately in small amounts so i'm curious to see if they'll you know keep keep stocking different kinds of putty and stuff um if that's like going to be a regular new edition or if they're kind of just testing it out for right now okay so these are super cute uh i tried out regular glue dots it's probably been two two and a half years at this point easily um and I never really got super into it. <laughs> um, I think in part, I liked the idea of supporting small shops and having like a scented wax product. And so I wasn't, there wasn't really any incentive to try that hard. <laughs> um, but then when I saw like, oh, scented glue dots, that's, that's pretty fun. Let's give that a try again. Plus it's like, why not? Okay, I'm reading. She, uh, she sent instructional things and she has a video too that she, she emailed over. Um, okay, roll between your fingers. You should only need one or one and a half dots for your single placer. You squeeze your fingers to load the sticky dot into your single placer or multi-placer if you're feeling sassy. Remove any, that's what I was having trouble with and I maybe need to try. Remove any excess from the tip. I just press mine against the outer border of my canvas to squish out any excess. Okay, there's a YouTube channel, The Uncrafty Crafter. Okay, so let's see. And if you like using glue dots and you're like seeing me struggle here, I have tips to see it's like it's it's rolled up a little bit but then I just uh, where to oh no to just blend in there it is maybe I need to use the tweezers I think my fingernails are being problematic my nails okay okay come off the tweezers now and you just kind of like smush it in there yeah and then it's like not all squishing in there, so she said to just press it flat to try to get the excess off. We are learning, my friends. And I am sure that there, like, I know so many people, like, literally, they swear by glue dots. Um, and so you please take this with a grain of salt. Literally, the last time I tried using any kind of glue dot was, it has to have been two and a half years ago. I don't totally know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like, okay, I think that's in there as much as it's gonna go. So then she says, squeeze off the excess. Is that gonna pinch off the excess? Oh, that totally did, that pinched off the excess. Okay. And so then there's, it's in there. It pinched off the excess. All right, we'll give that a try. Sure, why not? <laughs> but yeah, like I was saying, I I didn't ever, I never really got into and never really had that much motivation to try out like just the regular glue dots anyway because I was like, well, I just enjoy enjoy uh, blah, blah, enjoy supporting small shops and like I like having a scented product like just a little bit like it just makes it more fun I guess uh, to have something that like smells fun and stuff and 
meat's another thing to like collect. So that's why I thought, okay, sure, I'll give it a try. Like that's scented glue dots. That's like a fun, fun concept. But anyway, okay. So we've got new putty, new glue dots, new pen, new tray. Are you guys ready for this? Am I ready for this? <laughs> I think so. I'm not gonna try to like, this is already folded down. I'm not gonna try to get the cover minder perfectly under there. But look, little dragon friend. All right, let me grab a color and we'll get going. So how are you guys doing today? I hope that your week is off to a wonderful start as usual. This will be going up on, on Monday. As long as YouTube cooperates. YouTube's been giving me sass lately and I don't appreciate it. Like not like just randomly deciding not to to load upload my videos. Oh, that's nice. That lined up really well. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll see if this, this weapon chat will upload without giving me trouble tonight. Let's, let's take a look and see. Um, but okay. Forgive me when I'm like on a learning curve and I'm paying attention to be like, how does this product feel different? I might go a little silent because that's just what my brain does. <laughs> Uh, oh, and I'm just smacking the camera. I have to pull the phone, my phone back just a tiny bit because I did bring it a little close to the canvas, so I might have to pull you back so I'm not constantly smacking you. Anyway, it's uh, it's Sunday evening. All's quiet in the house. I put the boys to bed, and um, Adam is out uh, doing a film shoot with a friend. He's helping out, and it's, has, it's outdoors, and it's at night, so like he had to be out late for it. Um, so we'll see what, what time he actually gets home. He was hoping by midnight. Uh, but we, we will see. Um, this kit is very, very confetti heavy. You guys are joining me as I found like a little, little bit of multi-placing here. Um, I have been a little surprised by just how confetti heavy this is. I was not expecting it. It's definitely been slow going, but I think that the way that it's turning out is incredibly beautiful. Um, it's, it's just really stunning. I'm anxious to get into some of these, like how the rest of her skin has been rendered and stuff like that. Right now, I, I've kind of been down like in the seaweed and with the fishes and stuff like that, because, um, after trying to get a good start on it, um, right after I filmed the sneak peek, which it hadn't come in until Thursday because UPS was was moving a little slow last week. It came in on Thursday and I was like, quick, film me, film the sneak peek. And then I was like, yeah, let's get this up. <laughs> uh, because I I knew that it would work for both the Mermaids and Magic event that my friends, uh, my friends Shay and Randy are hosting. Shay is uh, Crafting with Shay on YouTube. And then Randy is You Can Call Me Butter. And the event's going on throughout the month of March. And you can join at any time. And I'm just running in for the, the community aspect and to support some friends. Um, they did this event, is this the third year or the second year? I think it might be, I think it might be the second year for it. Um, but yeah, I was like, I can join in on that. And then I was looking at the image and I'm like, yeah, this has a lot of green. I bet that this qualifies for the Emerald Along as well. And the Emerald Along is hosted by my friend, Lindsay, Emeralds and Fairy Lights. Um, so this kit worked for both. I thought, oh, let's go, let's get it up. I did not, you guys, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. This kit is 65 by 65 centimeters. Tell me why my brain like decided to like somehow round that number down. I was like 65 by 65. That's almost like 60 by 60, which is almost like 50 by 50. And that's basically a snack size. Why does my brain act this way? <laughs> No, 65 by 65 centimeters is not a snack size kit. What am I thinking? Um, I I just, and I, at first glance I looked, I was like, oh no, like the size of the canvas isn't really that big. And then I started working on it. I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> confetti. This is going to be a project. This is not what I was expecting. Um and so it has been like, I don't know, for some reason for me, it's like I have to kind of go into a project like knowing what to expect. Like mentally, it's like I, my brain needs to be prepared for it. And especially if it's like I go into a project expecting that it's not going to be as huge of a commitment and then all of a sudden it is, then my brain like wants to rebel and be like, how about we just not work on this project then? And Or I get sassy or grumpy about it. So I've been working on resetting my brain on that and being like, okay, chill. Like... 
it's it's not like there are any other like pressing projects that you need to be working on anyway and this is a beauty and this artwork is ridiculously beautiful so calm down <laughs> uh so yeah that's it's just funny it's it's just funny um i have though been a little bit thinking like should i pull out like a smaller like round drill kit and like work on that like to, and, and give myself little breaks in between sections of this kit and i so far i have not um i mean i basically started this kit i i didn't put any drills down did i put any drills down on thursday night maybe but primarily on Friday, it's like I'm barely 72 hours into this kit. Like this should just not be um, something I'm like feeling burnt out on already. I think what it is though, is that I, at the end of February and leading up to working on this project, I was going so hard on my cross stitch conversion project because I had found some momentum and was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna finish this second panel. Like let's get it done. And I did, and I I had been coming off of working on several square drill kits, and I think at that point I just thought, like, okay, I wanna work on a round drill kit next. But I also was like, I wanna work on this one right away because especially after I unbox this kit, I'm like looking at how it's looking on the canvas, and I'm like, you know, I really wanna see how this looks with drills down. I really wanna know what the rendering is actually going to look like because I find that the printing on the canvas and the digital render preview that Diamond Art Club shows us when they do the previews on their social media, um, I just feel like it's, I mean, there's only so much you can do. It's literally like digital, <laughs> a digital render versus actual diamonds drills on a canvas. Like it's, it cannot be perfect, a perfect representation at all. But I, I, nine times out of 10, I love how it looks with actual drills on the canvas as opposed to how it looks in the digital render. So often, most of the time, if I'm on the fence just based on the digital render, I just trust it if I like the image because I'm like, this is just gonna look better. It's gonna make more sense. The colors are gonna blend and work better when I'm looking at the diamonds on the canvas. I just, I'm sure of it. But I just had this hunch that I was like, I think other people, I think that some other people may be concerned when they see this render. And I'm like, hey, I, maybe I can put people's minds at ease. And apparently that was not an issue because this kit sold out ridiculously quickly, both during the early release and um, uh, during the general release. So I guess that wasn't, wasn't something I needed to worry about. But now just for my own curiosity, it's like, well, I've started, I'm gonna keep going. And I still do wanna see how it's gonna look. Um, but that kind of like, okay, so I wonder, I realized that like, I am a little bit of a nut about rendering like if you watch my unboxings and if you watch my post reviews like anything at all i feel like you basically will mostly just be hearing me talk about the rendering um because literally that is like just the most important thing to me um it's the thing that i care the most about when it comes to diamond painting and i'm wondering like for you what is the thing that you care the most about what is like the make it or break it thing for you I know for a lot of people, they're like, well, maybe maybe rendering isn't such a big deal because it's like, oh, if they don't like how something turns out one way, they'll just rechart it themselves. You know, they'll just, they'll tweak it, they'll fix it, whatever. I actually loathe having to rechart things. It is not fun for me. I feel like I am like wasting time basically. I'm like, I could be diamond painting and making further progress on a project instead. I don't enjoy recharting and having to make my brain work. I do diamond painting in large part because it lets me relax and kind of tune my brain out just a little bit. And so if I have to think about <laughs> like doing stuff with recharting, like that's not enjoyable for me. And so there's that. And I'm also like, there's a lot of things that I can work around with a painting. Like if I don't love 
the material that's used for the canvas or even to a certain extent I'm not as picky about like my drill material like acrylic versus resin I care way more about like are the drills consistently sized like if I have to fight through to find drills that aren't a disaster to work with or if the drills are popping like yes that's going to be a problem but some people are are much more particular about the materials on their drills or I don't know any number of other things um but for me it's always like the rendering is always going to be the thing that I care the most about that's kind of make it or break it for me and I that's why I get to almost obsessive level I think um where I just I'm always kind of trying to figure out well, what's this company's rendering style? Like, how is this artwork going to turn out? Is it going to make sense? Is it going to work? Is it going to do the original um, artist's work justice? And like, is there going to be unnecessary confetti? Like this, in my mind, is an example of necessary confetti just because of the nature of, of the image and the level of detail and the crazy amount of different colors. And I also just, I'm at a point where there are a lot of shops that I know exactly kind of what their rendering style is going to be and can shop there with reasonable, reasonable confidence knowing like, this is the, this is the finished result that I'm going to get like Diamond Art Club. Okay. I know I'm going to get like a clean, crisp rendering style. I know it's been hand charted. I know that their, their rendering team is top notch and I know exactly what kinds of artwork I definitely am going to gravitate towards from Diamond Art Club because that's my jam. Um, I love Jade to Gem Shop's rendering style, which is completely different from Diamond Art Club's, but I love it for different reasons. I love it for different kinds of artwork, and I think that there's space, you know, for both of those kind of, those are kind of opposite extremes from one another, um, but they're both valid, and there's a ton of shops that do really, really well anywhere on the spectrum between those things. Or, you know, at those extremes as well. Like, I like how Muni made renders. I love how Enablers Outpost renders. I love how Diamond Painting Shop renders. You know, there's there's tons of shops that I do really love their rendering style. And I just will find that, like, it's the ones that I feel like are going to do their artwork well. And that I'm going to enjoy the finished result and enjoy the process of working on it. Like, that is, in my mind, going to outweigh virtually anything else <laughs> aside from a, there are a couple other things like the light that, that I feel like are foregone conclusions for me like the artwork has to be legally licensed but you know from the artist and if I'm working with square drills like I need there to not be popping you know um heck I'll even depending on the quality I'll even work on double-sided adhesive Sparkle Queen Creations and Diamond Painting Deutschland both had a really excellent quality double-sided adhesive that they're at, and I'm, they're companies that also have double-sided adhesive that I did not have a good experience with. But like those two, I'm like, yeah, no, if I like the image, I don't have a problem working with that double-sided adhesive because I know it's at least a good quality double-sided adhesive. So I don't know. It's, uh, I, I don't know. I was kind of just thinking about that. I was like, does it, does it irk people when they feel like that's basically what I focus on? Like that's what most of my post review will be talking about is like the things that I loved. It's like, it'll have to do with rendering. And if there were challenges, like it, it's either if there was a quality issue with the materials or if there are things that I just didn't care for about the rendering or the things I thought were egregious about the rendering. Um, so yeah, so I was like, I kind of want to, I want to pull, pull you guys. Like, are you equally as, much of a stickler about the rendering or is there other stuff that matters way more to you that is like deal breaker level i don't know sound off in the comments below i want to i want to pick your brains and hear from you i have to say so far i think we're just 10 minutes into actually putting diamonds on the canvas here i'm enjoying the putty and the glue dots the glue dot takes a little like a little bit of getting used to like it almost pulls out like just a little bit when it sticks to the drills. And I don't know if, I bet there's a learning curve with like how you load it and how you like get the excess off and stuff. What I really should have done before starting this video was hopped over to the Uncrafty Crafters video that she sent me demoing. I think that she did a video demoing like how to load and use, use these scented glue dots. These Oh Snap, what was it called? Oh Snap Dots Scented Sticky Dots. Um, so that's, that's on me. 
I'm kind of like a just jumping to get my hands dirty sometimes. Like, let's just try it and see if I can figure it out. Um, so yeah, that's random, random musings on rendering, charting. If you're like, what's rendering? It's, it's literally how the image has been charted, like on the canvas with the, like what colors are used and where they're placed. Like it's basically the pixel art itself. I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of a nut about that. And it's fascinating. The whole process of it all fascinates me. And I love talking to people that like that's what they do is the hand charting part of things. It just is endlessly fascinating to me. But anyway, we can, we can move on to other topics. <laughs> um, so like I mentioned, it's uh, like, I feel like I am flirting with burnout a little bit when it comes to both projects and a little bit with content, a little bit, like a little bit of both. Um, I am nervous that Coming off of finishing my second cross stitch conversion panel, um, and I in my head was like thinking, oh, I want to work on a smaller round drill kit next because I've been working really hard on this incredibly confetti heavy square kit. It was very large, and I spent a lot of time. Like it just, it was a, it was exciting to finish that panel, but I was very ready for something uh, different and a change of pace. And I found myself stepping back into something with a very similar feel to it because this is a square a larger square drill piece with lots of confetti um and so i feel like i am i need to be really careful because i don't want to project burnout <laughs> and so it's it's hard because i could pull out a smaller round drill kit to break up the monotony of this but i'm also like but if I lose momentum, then is this going to be harder to come back to? Or, or am I going to feel annoyed that like I've had this project as a whip for a while? And I already have a project from last month that is sitting as a whip that I need to like, I'd like to go back to sometime this month, but it's also a square drill kit that I worked on for a different video. That's the Mercury by Roy Trin. Um, and then I'm also like, I don't want to work on just a bunch of diamond art club kits. Like I really want to mix it up and be, make sure that I am working on kits from a variety of different companies. And there's a kit coming up that I cannot share any details on that. I know that I want to work on and, and, and I want to plan around that a little bit. <laughs> So there's just, I don't know, I take all these things into consideration. I'm a little bit of an overthinker. It's a character flaw. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to figure out like, what's the smartest way that I can avoid burnout? Like, is it better or worse for me to keep working on this project? <laughs> um, and then content wise, this past week, I put up six videos in seven days. And that is a rarity for me. I don't normally try to do that because it is a lot um i usually do five and for some reason like doing that sixth one just yeah it feels like a whole heck of a lot more um but i just have so much that i wanted to do and a lot that i was really excited about that i did that and then i'm like mm, i think i need to stick to five tops uh just to be safe because no i don't want to burn out on making content either it's it's all a balance because it's not just about like filming the video. Often there's prep work that goes into, into it before I even hit the record button on the camera. Um, some videos less than others or more than others. Uh, and then there's editing time on the back end. And then there's like all the actual like upload and set up and set all the details. Like, it can, it can be a bit of a time consuming process. And I, I have a rhythm that works, I think decently well for me, but I don't want to push it too hard. So I think I want to make weeks like this last week where I had six videos in seven days be more the exception rather than the rule because I can't, I can't set myself. What's, is there not sticky there? Is there something stuck there? What's going on? Hold on. Did I accidentally peel off the sticky that was right there earlier? Let me try something. Okay, I think we're okay. I couldn't get a drill to stick there and I didn't see any concave bottoms or anything. Anyway, um, 
so those are always things I'm, I'm striving to do, especially like we're, we're dealing with some general just like stress at home and stuff. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, just it's always about finding a balance, it seems like. Um, so I like I said, I feel like I'm just skirting the edges of burnout and I want to be aware of that and and make good decisions <laughs> to avoid pushing that too far. Maybe I could pull out like some paint gem minis. I really want to work on that one of those mini cross stitch conversions I just unboxed from Jade, which that was one of the videos I was like, I just want to get this up, this video up ASAP because the world needs to know that these exist because I'm so darn excited. But then I'm like, well, I I seeing some of the comments on that video and then some of the questions that came up today because that that video and, and Jade's mini kits actually came up today. I was hanging out in Shay's live, Crafting with Shay, also one of the hosts of, of this event. And the questions that people were bringing up, some people were just like, what is a cross stitch conversion? And how they were just struggling to kind of understand it on more of a conceptual level that has my brain going like, okay, well, when I do work on one of these kits from Jade, I, may, I can use this as like a, a teaching opportunity and, and explain more about like, what this is, how it works, like turn it into a, it can be a video where it's like, all right, let's start from step one and let's walk through, like, what do you do? <laughs> cause, cause the unboxing that I did, it was just an unboxing. It wasn't supposed to be like a full on tutorial, but I think it did get some people's minds going like, like what is, what, okay, so what do I do? What is this? What is this? What does this actually even mean? Um, and I know that like there's um, a cross stitch conversion event coming up in um, October. I think it's going to start mid October and go through the end of the year. Uh, that is being run by um, three fabulous creators. Uh, so there's um, Sophie, the Diamond Help Desk, and then Hannah, who's Sparkling Spectrumite, and then Anthony, who's Single and Placing. Um, I'll try to remember to link to their channels below. But they're doing a cross stitch conversion event at the end of the year. And I know that they're doing tons of hard work and prep and hoping to make that be like a really informative uh, space and event for people that like want to work on cross stitch conversions alongside other people and also like for an educational type type thing, too. So props to them for doing that. <laughs> um, so I don't want to step on their toes at all, but I also am like, well, there's Maybe there's some helpful info that I can put out too that'll maybe help support that event, maybe? I don't know. Like ahead of time, oh, my brain's always going. But I just am stoked about Jade's mini, mini cross stitch conversion sets. So I'll uh, point you towards that unboxing video I did where I'll explain everything that like comes with those kits and why I'm so darn excited about it. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what's what's been on the brain. We'll see. I have the feeling I'm just gonna end up working on this kit until it's finished. Um, and just enjoying seeing her come to life. Come on, get off the glue. Or the putty, rather. It's not glue, it's putty. All right. So anyway, other things that are going on. Um, general family updates. So let's see. Connor did officially graduate is what his teacher called it. Um, from the special ed, like the, the separate special ed class that he was in Friday was his last day where he was even partly in that class. He at that point had, uh, was, was barely in there and had mostly transitioned over to the general education classroom or gen ed class. Um, but Friday was his official last day. And, uh, so tomorrow, which is, uh, was today for you guys, <laughs> he will be doing his first full day fully mainstreamed. And I'm excited for him, but of course a little bit nervous and hoping like, I hope that he doesn't feel like overwhelmed. I hope he doesn't feel like scared. I hope that ever, the kids are, that his, his classmates are nice to him and, and all those sorts of things. I did check in with his teacher last week and she said he's doing wonderfully. Um, but I don't know, there's a little bit of me that's still just like, what was this? Was this the right choice? Is he gonna be okay? It's a much, it's such a different setting and all this and that and the other thing. But uh, I've talked to Connor a lot about it, and he doesn't seem, you know, he's just totally going with it. He doesn't seem particularly like thrown or scared or upset. He's kind of like, oh, this is what I'm doing now. Um, 
And I think that he really is a bit more flexible than I give him credit for. It's interesting because really one of the, where did that drill go? There it went. Um, often one of the key characteristics of autistic kiddos is the rigidity and the need for structure and routine. And Connor does have some of that. It's just the way that it plays out tends to maybe be a little bit different than you might expect, where somehow like maybe because this has been so carefully built up to and very intentionally done, like this whole process has not been quite as difficult for him because there's been a lot of like carefully thought through transition involved. Ooh, that glue dot just came right out of there. Okay. Let's grab the tweezers and pop that back in there. Um, but he has had, a, he's been acting out a little bit at home that I'm guessing is maybe related to some of those transitions in school. Um, so we've tried to be like plenty, you know, gracious and stuff with him and everything just to, you know, realize like he's working, he's got some big stuff going on that he's working through. Uh, so we'll see how things go this week with him being fully mainstreamed. Um, but I'm just, I'm really proud of him. He's, he's just so awesome and he's so bright. He's so, 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 so bright. He will get to keep riding the bus through the end of the school year, which is nice. Uh, very convenient. <laughs> um, Micah is doing pretty well. Mike and I have been fighting off a little bit of a bug. Um, Micah, he was borderline the a couple of days last week on whether or not I should send him. I was like talking with this teacher, like, you know, I this is how he seems at home. Like, I'm not sure how he's going to do at school as far as like he was coughing just a little bit. Um, and, but he wasn't, he didn't have like a runny nose. He didn't have a fever. He didn't have anything else. He just had a, a bit of a cough. And I was like, I, I'm going to send him, but I, I just tried to make clear to his teacher, like, as always, like, if I'm trying to follow the district guidelines and state guidelines and everything, I said, but if I send him and he shouldn't be there and you think he needs to come home, like, call me anytime, like anytime, please call me and have me come and get him. It's, it's completely fine. Um, but they had a weird situation on f last Friday where it was like a minimum day where they were going to get out like extra early. I don't know. California. I'm like, this is not how I grew up, <laughs> but I grew up in Ohio and the way that, I mean, I think just the way the schools work was maybe a little bit different, but yeah, they had this, they had this thing called a minimum day. And then they were trying to say that like, oh, like the, the normally the kids that are late arrival, TKers, which that's Micah. Instead, they're going to come in two hours early, like at the normal start time for everyone. And I just was kind of like, excuse me. <laughs> like, I think this is just standard district practice. It's not like they were aiming it at Micah or at like his class or something. But I was be like, do, do okay. One of the big things that we were working towards, like one of the whole reasons that we moved him to this class and we're waiting for this class to like open up basically since the beginning of the school year is because he is not, he was not doing well with the early start time. Like, and now you're telling me that like on this random, like once in a blue moon minimum day, they're gonna be like, okay, let's totally throw off these kids schedules and have them come in two hours earlier than usual and blah, 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 blah. And I was just kind of like, I don't think that's going to happen. Is that drill supposed to be there? Nope, that must have flown off at some point. Um, and conveniently or inconveniently, um, Micah was still like under the weather. He was like under the weather a little bit Wednesday and Thursday. And so I just sent a message to his teacher on Thursday evening. And I said, I'm not going to get up Micah early tomorrow morning. I think he needs to sleep, especially because he's clearly fighting something off. And if I go in to get him at like what would be his normal wake up time and he seems to be fine, I'll just drive him into school. But I'm not... Like, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a diva or like a parent that thinks that their kids should have special treatment. Uh, I'm not trying to be that person, but I like, I just, he's in TK. Like I, and this completely defeats the purpose and he's gonna be completely thrown too, I think. Like here, now we're gonna do this totally different thing from your usual. And Micah is definitely the kind of kiddo that he thrives on routine and structure and knowing exactly what to expect gets it from his mama. <laughs> uh, so as it turned out, like I ended up just letting Micah miss school on Friday. Um, and he just slept in. And I think that was, 
that was really for the best. They got out so early that day. Anyway, I was like, I would be taking him in and he'd basically be in school for like an hour and a half. Um, I don't know. I don't understand. <laughs> but it's... It is, it is what it is. It's not a huge deal. It's not a big deal. And he and I are still, like, Mike is still coughing. Like, I've still got a little bit of a, little bit of a tickle. And I, I am still dealing with some, like, migraines and stuff that I think are either allergies or illness related. So I don't know if Micah, I think I'm going to try to send him tomorrow. It's just the cough and it's really few and far between. But it sounds like, even though it's few and far between, like, when he does cough, it sounds, I don't know, like a bit raspy and I'm like that just doesn't sound great but it's I'm sure it's just that he's just had a little bit of a cold that the gunk just you know went down a little bit or it might truly just be allergies because I think um our senior cat grew in this super fluffy coat this winter which Adam and I were both talking about this the other day and we're like she has she's almost 13 years old we're like she's never grown in such a thick and fluffy winter coat before what is going on i theorized that maybe like when we got skip we had him on kitten food for a while and i was like maybe she was eating some of his kitten food and like she got some of those like <laughs> good fats and oils and stuff she doesn't look she doesn't look like she's gained weight at all it's just this super super fluffy fur and, but now she's starting to shed it a little bit. And I know it's driving my sinuses crazy. And I'm kind of like, could this be allergies for Micah too then? Like, is he having some mild allergies? I'm trying to vacuum and keep up with it. But it's it's she spends a lot of time under our bed. And it's actually incredibly difficult to vacuum under our bed just with the way our room is set up. It's a small space. Like, it's just really darn hard to get under there with a the vacuum. I have one of those... Um, even like the stick backs, which I live and breathe and swear by our Dyson stick back because it's like rechargeable. It's cordless. Um, it's fantastic. And I love that thing. <laughs> and uh, so I can get under the bed some, but it just, oh my gosh, I think it's the fur. I think it's, I think it's her fur. Um, she doesn't really, I don't think she would really tolerate us brushing her, but it's really tempting to try because, oh, that fluffy fur. <laughs> uh, kitten cat updates. Um, Skip continues to be super mischievous. He thinks it's hilarious that our walls are still open, which more on that in a moment. But um, so he likes to like climb through the walls downstairs where we had to have a bunch of wall taken out. Um, and he also continues to be adorably attached to Connor. Um, it's really darn adorable. He will pick Connor over the rest of us any day and every day. Uh, like when Connor gets home from school, that's when Skip will decide to be done with like his morning nap upstairs. And as soon as he hears Connor's voice, he comes right out and is like, he does the cute little like yawn, stretch, blink, blink, blink. And then... It just like sleepily plods up to Connor and Connor's like, hi, Skip. And Skip just climbs right into Connor's lap wherever Connor is and they just cuddle and it's adorable and ridiculous and adorable and ridiculous. <laughs> um, he'll cuddle with us too, but like Connor is the clear favorite, which I mean, Connor is super snuggly, so I don't really blame Skip, but um, uh, yeah, Connor's the favorite. Skip is still um, figuring out how to play well with Connor. Uh, we're, and we're also trying to work with Connor on like, because sometimes we're like, Mom, Skip's biting me. Skip scratching me. Because Skip gets in very playful moods. He's a kitten. And so we're trying to teach Connor like, okay, this is, this is, oops, we lost the blue dot again. Um, this is how you can handle this. You know, you help, you know, Skip kind of chill out and disengage a little bit. And it's always like, Connor, you can just stand up. Like, just stand up and walk away. Um, I wonder if there's a trick to these glue dots not coming out, especially because now we're going to be doing some filling in. And there's some tighter spots on this canvas where, um, especially where the ABs are, it's just a little bit more of a snug fit. And I don't I, I don't really want the, I hope the glue dots not going to want to come out every time. Um, learning curve, you guys. It's all learning curve. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so they're figuring it out and they're still very, very sweet. Um, and 
uh, Skip and Dolce are are getting along pretty well, actually. Uh, we hear very, very, very little, if any, like growling or fussing from, well, Dolce would be the culprit. Um, now it's like, it's tolerance and, <clears throat> sorry, I think it's those, those allergies again. Um, it's like she tolerates him and she's less annoyed by him. I think that maybe it, it, he's helping her be a little bit more brave, which was kind of what we were hoping. Like she started coming downstairs during the day a bit more, which is not her usual MO. Part of us thinks like she's trying to make sure that she's staking her her claim and her territory. Like this is still my space cat, a uh, little kitten. But like they, they were hanging out on our bed the other night as Adam and I were kind of winding down for bed and like reading and I was doing some last minute like uh, edits and stuff for my, my video. And um, both cats were on the bed and they were just, <laughs> Dolce was sitting on Adam's pillow and Skip was antagonizing her, trying to get her to play. And she was just, they were just kind of like doing that thing that sometimes you see cats doing in like reels or TikTok or whatever. Where they're just kind of like lazily like batting at each other, like occasional like boop on the snoot. Like, and then it, it was funny because it was like Skip would engage with her, like be like, play with me, play with me, like kind of swat at her face. Um, and then he'd immediately roll over onto his back and expose his belly to be like, don't worry, you're still the boss, but like play with me, play with me. <laughs> and mostly she was just like, oh, like a little bit of grumpy old man. But like she wasn't upset. It was just like, she's like, you youngins and you're playing. <laughs> so thankfully they're getting along there. They will like eat at the same time downstairs and stuff. So at this point, Adam and I are considering this like, OK, it's been a success. It took a little maybe a little bit longer than we expected. But she the, our senior cat did adjust this was not a terrible decision. I was a little nervous, to be honest. I was actually afraid that I might even get a little bit of backlash like from you guys, because when I had initially, well, there have been a few times where I mentioned in my whip and chats to be like, yeah, we're thinking of like getting a kit and here are the reasons I'm nervous. And there were some people that like actually really actively suggested against us getting a kitten for the sake of our senior cat. To be fair, I'm sure that that was based on my my concerns that like I was expressing to you guys. And so I appreciate that like you validated and you heard those. But then I was like, there was, I just, I was nervous. I was like, well, we ended up doing it anyway. Are, are people going to be like, well, why'd you ask if you're still going to get one? <laughs> but I haven't had any, I haven't had any backlash like that. So um, I guess I should give you guys more credit. <laughs> well, that didn't really pick up. I didn't really pick up what I meant to there. Um, so anyway, they're doing wonderfully. And now I'm like, okay, should we get a dog? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We really do want to get a dog at some point, but now is not the time. Not the time. And I just, in my mind, it'd be nice if we lived in a little bit bigger space before we got a dog. Because I just think that it would probably be a bit much if we had a dog in the small space that we live in right now. Um, Connor asked the other day, he was like, can we get a hamster? I was like, nope, no rodents. And he was like, why can't I get a hamster? I was like, we're not getting any rodents. <laughs> he was like, but why? And I was like, I was explaining. I was like, well, I think that Skip bites you. <laughs> I was like, let me tell you about hamsters. Um, and I just was like, I don't like, I'm, we're not doing that. I, it's totally fine if it's, I'm not judging anyone that does whatsoever. I just know it's not, it's not for me like that. I don't get joy out of having those kinds of pets. And I just, um, I, I just don't think it would go. I don't think it would be a good fit for our family. <laughs> that was just funny. He was like, I'm like, we got you a cat. We skipped, we skipped the transitional pet. We went straight to the cat for you. <laughs> like there's no need for a road, a, a hamster. You got the cat. Also the cat would eat the hamster. Um, so anyway, sorry if that was callous or in poor taste. <laughs> uh, other updates. So Adam is still job hunting. We, we will hopefully hear back on an interview that he had. Hopefully we'll hear back early this week and I'm hoping and praying for good things. And as much as I am a broken record, I would love to continue to ask you guys for any positivity you have to send our way, especially about this one in particular. It's really hard not to get my hopes up. Um, but yes, so I'll keep you guys posted, but um, he's keeping busy with um, 
not only job hunting, but also he's taking advantage of having this time to get some like screenwriting and film related things done. He's also been spending some time on um, his his kind of newfound hobby that like could turn into a side hustle actually because he's pretty darn good at it of photography. And he's been doing like some of that on the side. Like today he went and helped a friend um, taking some uh, professional headshots for like her portfolio and her resume. Um, she's an acting as well. So it's, yeah, it's, it's good that he's able to do that and, and help out, you know, friends and network that way as well. So I think that's pretty cool on my end. Um, I, like I mentioned, I'm still kind of dealing with some migraines and headaches. So it was kind of rough last week. Like I had a, I had one day where it was like, I had to take my prescription migraine meds like more than once and it just was not wanting to kick this headache and I wasn't to be fair I was not being very good about like getting away from my my triggers at that particular moment um I, like that was that was on me like I just I didn't go to a dark quiet cool space like I usually do I was I was too busy being social <laughs> and I I mean I paid for it <laughs> but it was worth it <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, uh, we did go down and visit Adam's family, Adam's parents on Saturday. We hadn't been down to their place to visit in a while. And so we drove down with the kids, um, and had a really, really nice visit with them on Saturday. It was very relaxing and just, we just chatted, the kids played and, um, it's like, this is part of the reason we... We love that they live in town now uh, because they used to live in, in Ohio. And now they, Adam's parents live out here. So that was really fun to get to do. And um, we'd seen them like recently, but we hadn't driven down to their place. So that was, that was fun to do. And then um, my mom was supposed to fly out for a visit this week because she and my dad are in Arizona for spring training right now. They're there for the month. And my mom was like, well, it's a really cheap flight from Arizona to California compared to um, from Ohio to California, which is where my parents still live. And uh, my dad certainly didn't mind because he's just going to lots of baseball games. My mom's going to a lot of baseball games with him, but not like all of them. And my dad didn't mind. So my mom was like, well, I'll just come out like for a week. Um, while, while we're there for spring training. So they're going to be at spring training for a month and they're going to go up to Colorado and do like the Grand Canyon and all that. Um, and then go back to Ohio and they drove out. They like spent three days driving out so they'd have their car and everything. Um, what letter should we do next? Let's do, where's the letter T? Anyway, unfortunately though, after having avoided the thing for three years, my mom tested positive for you know what last week. Um, she's doing fine. It's been very, very mild. She actually, like, she wouldn't otherwise have tested, except that she needed uh, to do, like, an emergency dental visit because she had, like, a crown fall off. Um, so she was going to go to a dentist there and was like, well, I have a little bit of a cough and a little bit of a, a like, a, some, some runny nose going on. I'll take a test just to be safe before I go in and someone's all up in my business working in my mouth. Uh, my wording, not hers. <laughs> and she tested positive. And so she's doing fine. Um, it's all, you know, it's pretty mild, all things considered. But she, for that reason, and for some other scheduling things, she actually ended up bumping her trip to be a little bit later in the month. Um, so Connor's school is doing grandparents day towards the end of the month. And they had just sent out like invites and info about that um, last week. And so I mentioned it to my mom. I was like, you know, if it's not a big deal like maybe do you want to come out a little bit later like move your trip and then you could come to grandparents day and of course that like completely melted her heart and she was like oh my gosh that would mean so much to me let me talk to dad and see and and then she's like yeah and it'll probably work out better then because then I I know that I'm traveling when I'm healthier and so yeah she ended up moving her trip she'll also be here then not quite to but almost to Micah's birthday so we'll probably do his party if we do a party or something like that, like the weekend before, like while she's while she's here and we'll celebrate and have cupcakes and stuff. So um, so I'm a little bummed that like she's not going to be out here <laughs> this week like we were planning, but the timing will be better for her to be out out later for sure. Um, as far as house updates go, um, we had the dry a drywall guy come out and 
take pictures, take measurements, and then sent us an estimate. And let's just say that I'm gonna ask for a second estimate from someone else just to get a sense for like, is, is this correct? <laughs> because the number that we were quoted seemed beyond outrageous to be, I mean, and I'm not like super savvy about like the cost of a lot of home repair related stuff, but like it seemed just disproportionately high. We had gotten a quote for like the drywall replacement and they had to, re he has to replace like the door frame and um, the trim and, and some other things. And then, and then part of the estimate that we got, we asked for it to be as like a separate line item because we didn't know if we'd want to do it or not was the cost of painting uh, the areas of the wall that had been removed. And this is what actually twigged for me and was like, I think that these rates might be kind of ridiculously high or like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think that this might not necessarily be the route that we should go because the cost of painting and keep in mind, we live in a very small space. It's not that much square footage at all that needs to be painted, but I'm willing to pay for someone's labor what they should be paid. The cost of the painting was going to be $850. And this was for like a small hallway, a small half bath, and half of one wall in our kitchen. And I just, it just doesn't make sense for me for that to be $850. Um, and, and then I think you can maybe imagine like then what the cost that he was he was giving us for the drywall and everything else was. And I just was like, I Adam, I think we need to get a second estimate. So I'm gonna work on that this week about having someone else come out. And I just wanna find out like, is like, okay, what would a, a different contractor give us for an estimate? Because if that's what it's gonna cost, that's what it's gonna cost, but I, I don't know that again, that seems disproportional to disproportionate to what we had to pay for the other work that we've had done so far for these repairs. Like it's the overall cost that he was quoting was, was literally more than the cost of all of the other major repairs and work and hours that have been spent up till this point. So I don't know, you guys, I don't know. Um, I'm going to, try to go into it with like eyes wide open. I did send the numbers over to like my dad and we talked to like Adam's parents about it. They kind of agreed. They're like, well, it could be that's just the cost of like labor for this thing in California. And we're like, yeah, maybe it is, but I maybe we'll find out if we get a second estimate. So I, I'm a little bit bummed though. Actually, I'm really bummed because that does just by nature then push out like the end date for when this stuff will be done. <laughs> like I just... We've mostly put our house back together as far as like the, where the kitchen table is. We have the stove plugged back in and stuff, but like the refrigerator is just in the middle of the, <laughs> of the room. There's a bunch of open walls. Like you can't really use the downstairs bathroom because it's just open. Um, so I'm anxious to get my house back, but I also, I don't want to have to pay what this, this particular person was quoting us for it. So we'll just, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I've been chatting for nearly an hour at this point, I just realized. So I'm going to try to wrap it up here. Uh, content wise this week, I'm going to try to ease back and have more of like my, my usual amount of content and, um, maybe do a cross stitch conversion update video. Like that would be really fun to do, to have for you guys. Since I finished my second panel, I want to show you guys how that turned out and talk about that process and, um, my learnings from that and whatnot. And I'm sure there'll be like some unboxings and, and stuff like that. I have a post review on some of my recently, com uh, on one of my recently completed projects that I already have filmed that I can maybe put up. So I don't know, stay tuned you guys. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so that you can see those new videos as they come out. And if you made it all the way, yeah, if you made it all the way through this whip and chat and you're not already subscribed, you probably will, like I think you'll probably like it here, so. Yeah, I'd love to have you here. So go ahead and, and hang out. You can hit the bell to be notified when I share new videos too. Um, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, let's see, what should our emoji be? Um, how about some kind of fish emoji? Oh, you haven't been able to see his face, but we've had this cute little betta fish that we were working on, on the fins of here. And then we're getting into, this is like her, I think this is her lower arm. Um, and then her lower back is, is over here. So, We'll see. We'll see how this turns out. I liked 
I definitely liked the putty. It's thicker than some other scented putties I've worked with, so I'm a fan. The glue dots, I want to keep playing with. It works pretty well. A couple of, like, I think maybe some user error things that I want to experiment with a little bit more, but yeah, I'll link to all of these small shops below. Oh, and the tray. I like the tray a lot. The drills lined up nicely and slid it out easily and go ahead and make the joke. It's okay, you guys. And then I like this rainbow pen from Shimmery Canvas. It's really lightweight. It's a little bit like on the a little bit on the thicker side of medium, I'd say, as far as like um, turning goes. But no, everything was great. It was fun to try out some new things with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you made all the way to the end, how about a fish emoji? Like I said, for our little beta fish friend that we were working on. And let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you were working on. And then the question that I asked earlier in the video that I'm still curious to hear from you about is, um, what is kind of the most important thing to you when it comes to your diamond paintings? Like what makes or breaks it for you? I talked a lot about how for me it's rendering and I'm curious if it's similar for you or if there's something else that is like, this is a deal breaker for me. <laughs> so uh, leave those thoughts down in the comments below. I'm curious to hear, hear what you guys what you guys say. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a really wonderful week and um, I'm looking forward to reading your comments below and catching up with you again next week and in all the you know videos and stuff this week. So have a, have a wonderful rest of your day, my friends, and I'll chat with you in the next one. Bye.